Hello and welcome to our first video lesson on Chapter 20, DNA Replication and Repair. In this first lesson we'll be considering DNA structure. First of all, let's define what we mean by the genome. The genome is the complete cell DNA sequence. For most bacteria, the genome is circular, that is, it's a circular DNA molecule. Many can be linear, but for the most part they're circular. The human genome is linear, as we'll see. They also vary considerably in terms of their size. We refer to the size in the number of base pairs, that is the number of nucleotide base pairs within the DNA molecule. The bacterial genome is anywhere from a half a million to ten million base pairs, depending on the bacteria. And the he human genome is actually four billion base pairs, that is three or orders of magnitude larger than, say, for instance, E. coli. But that doesn't mean we have a thousand times the number of genes. We only have eight times the number of genes. For humans, that's 30,000 genes, and for E. coli, that's 4,000. So what's the difference? Well, the E. coli genes use less DNA sequence. In other words, if we compare similar genes, the gene in E. coli would contain less DNA base pairs than the human form of the gene about a thousand bases in a typical bacterial gene and three thousand to up to almost two and a half million in a human gene. So we'll see the reason for the difference in size a little bit later. Let's first review the structure of the DNA molecule. Remember our sugar in this case is deoxyribose and that's illustrated at the top of the screen here. So we're missing the oxygen at the two prime position. That's what makes it a deoxyribose. And when we form the nucleic acid structure, at the 5' prime end we have three phosphates. The polymer is connected by joining the 5' prime phosphate of one nucleotide to the 3' prime OH of the previous nucleotide, and that forms our phosphodiester backbone. And of course the base is attached to the sugar. Remember the information in terms of transcription and translation, converting this into a sequence of amino acids and proteins is in the order of the bases. In DNA we have the bases adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine, and in RNA we have adenine, guanine, cytosine, and uracil. Just to review briefly the double helical form. Remember DNA is not a perfectly linear helix. There's a slight tilt and remember that's to maximize those hydrogen bonding interactions between the base pairs. And because of this we have a major and minor groove and that's illustrated in the models at the bottom of the screen here. On the left we have the space filling model you have the yellow and red that represents the phosphodiester backbone and as you can see the base pairs are internal to that backbone. On the right is the surface model and you can see a little bit better the major and minor grooves. The minor groove having a much smaller dimension than the major groove. So it might look as if we had a perfectly linear uh, DNA helix and then we messed it up by causing this tilt. But it's actually very favorable because there are many proteins that need to interact with this DNA molecule in a sequence specific fashion. In other words, they have to be able to uh, contact those bases in DNA to confirm that it's the right sequence. And the major groove is a large enough dimension to allow those proteins to bind to the DNA molecule and contact those bases to confirm the sequence. On the upper right here we have the three major forms of DNA. The main form is the B form and that's in the center here. The A form is the dehydrated form. You can see there's a less noted distinction between the major and minor groups, a more condensed molecule. On the far right is the Z form, a more extended molecule. This is a very unstable molecule. It's thought to be involved in transcription. But again, the most common form is the B form. You want to remember too that the DNA double helix is a right-handed helix. We determine that by pointing our thumb in the direction of the DNA molecule from bottom to top. 
and the strands coil in the same direction as the finger, that determines whether it's a left or right-handed helix. I will not be giving you a structure and asking you if it's left or right-handed. You simply have to remember the fact that our DNA double helix is a right-handed helix. In the picture here on the far left, we have the DNA tower in Perth, Australia. Many times scientists describe the DNA double helix as a spiral staircase the rail being the phosphodiester backbone and the steps being the perpendicular bases. So I guess those Aussies decided that if we talk about it we might as well build it. In our next video lesson we want to see if we have this 4 billion base pair long DNA molecule how do we package that to fit within the nucleus and if we can package it successfully how do we unpackage it if we want to replicate and synthesize that DNA molecule.